Special thanks to Savitar Tennis Center, the Swiss hotel in Singapore, for the opportunity to record this video at their courts. Hi, Thomas from fieldtennis.net here. From a field perspective, we can describe our strokes in a very simple way and we can describe them as throwing and pushing. So every stroke in tennis is a combination of a throwing feel and of a pushing feel. Now this throwing and pushing ratio varies during the game depending on the situation we're in and depending on the ball we're receiving. But I can just make a, like a general statement for a certain stroke there's a certain ratio. So if I'm receiving a nice ball, so if I'm receiving a nice ball, then let's say my forehand, my forehand is 80% throwing and 20% pushing. So to demonstrate this very clearly, I'm going to show you what a 100% throw looks like. So this would be a 100% throw of the racket in the ball. Here's go, one more time. A 100% throw. So you can see I, I have very good effortless power, but I don't have good control. Now on the other side of the spectrum is 100% push. Okay, so this is a 100% push. And with a 100% push, I feel very good control of the ball, but I'm very tight. So even though I might feel strong, the actual ball is not going that fast. And so we need to find this ratio between throwing and pushing to find the right mixture of power and control or the right mixture of effortless power. So for me, it looks something like this. So I'm starting my shot. It's okay, one more. I'm starting my shot with a throwing feel. I'm starting my shot with a throwing feel. And then I transition, so throwing, and then I transition into a more pushing feel. I'm not exaggerating, but there's an element of drive that we like to say. So I'm starting very loose, and I'm thinking I'm gonna throw the racket. And as I'm approaching the ball, as I'm continuing my swing, I'm transitioning into a drive. So in that way, I've you know, generated a lot of energy for my stroke, and now I need to tame it, I need to control it. And so I do that with an element of push. Obviously, I can't explain in, in reality what's going on, but I'm giving you the tools, giving you ideas so you can play with. And so experiment with this. What does it mean to start as a throw? What does it mean 100% throw? How does it feel to do 100% push? And see if you can find the right ratio. Here's a short clip that you'll see at the end of this video at normal speed. But here I'll slow it down when I hit the ball and share with you how much of a throw and how much of a push I put into the ball. This first forehand was around 70% throw and 30% push. This second one is an easier one, so I would say my throw was 85% and only 15% push. This backhand is around 70% throw, 30% push. And this forehand is just 30% throw and 70% push, as the ball was very deep and I just tried to play it nicely back. And this one is almost all push, perhaps just 10% of a throw and 90% of a push. Now just to make sure we're all on the same page, the push part doesn't have to be tight. I'm not contracting much when I push the ball over. It's more of a gentle push, guiding the ball where I want while still holding the racket quite gently. And here are two examples from Roger Federer. This first one is a return and you can see that this is probably like a 100% push against the ball because the ball is coming really fast so he just pushes it back deep. And the second one is very much of a throw because he's receiving a very nice ball and he can really let go into this ball. So you can see that in terms of throwing and pushing, there's a big difference. Now one more thought. When you're starting with the idea that you should throw the racket in the ball, you will usually throw too forcefully. So I'm going to show from a different angle how that usually looks like and what you should be doing instead. If this is the first time you're coming across the idea of throwing, then when you first try it, you will be very likely too forceful. And so 
your throwing idea is probably this trunk. So the racket would just fly over the net. That's with how much force you're probably imagining that you have to throw the racket. Now, if I'm just rallying nicely for warm up with a friend, then the force that I feel the that how far I want to actually throw the racket if I were to let go would be this much. So the racket would land in my own service box. So try and keep that try and keep that in mind. Just need a little bit of the throwing motion and the ball is just going bounce off the racket and for sure it's going to reach your partner. So just keep that in mind that when you start throwing, throwing is a very efficient way of generating force and you might be surprised with you know how effortlessly the ball is going to fly off your racket. So when you're throwing and you have this idea of throwing, you basically throw the racket in your own service box except you don't let go. Here's the one-handed backhand from a perspective of throwing and pushing. So I'll just start with my with my usual backhand. So this would be 100% throw. So I'm just throwing and as you can see I have no control. This would be 100% push. I'm very tight. I'll try and see now the transition from I'm starting as a throw and then there's an element of drive. Okay. So throw and drive. That gives me the best combination of that gives me the best combination of power and control. So just pushing gives me too much control, not enough power, too much tension. Just throwing doesn't give me enough control. So I transition from throwing to a little drive. Now the best way again to feel that is to exaggerate and you know try and experiment and feel both extremes. So how does it feel when you throw completely the racket in the ball and then how does it feel when you push 100% very tight and see if you can find the right ratio and be aware that you will probably have to adjust all the time while you're playing. Here's an example of a backhand slice. Okay, here we go. So my usual backhand slice, this is 100% throw. As you can see, I'm very comfortable, but I don't have control. This is 100% push. So I'm very tight, but I'm very uncomfortable. And so I'm transitioning from throw to drive. So from throw to drive, I, I have some control at the end. So that's very important that you feel when you're hitting your stroke that, you know, the stroke doesn't take you somewhere. You begin with the throwing feel and then you transition to a more controlled one. Apply these same principles to the serve and try and feel what does it mean to push the serve. You might be pushing the serve too much, that's very likely. So think about, okay, how can you push even more? What would be a 100% push? A 100% push of the serve. And go to the other extreme. What would it mean to throw the racket through the ball and have no control? So keep in mind, whenever you're throwing, you're losing control. But this, in this way, you're just trying to feel how does it feel. Do you feel that you are, you know, sending the ball very efficiently and very effortlessly off your racket? So 100% throw is like this. And for me personally, as I was trying to come up with the numbers, I would say that my serve is 95% throw and 5% push. There is an element of guiding in there, but it's very small. And so I know that for most players, this guiding path is, is way too much. Is there's this element of pushing and steering the ball is way too big and that slows the arm too much down. So there is an element, but it's a very small one. So as I'm swinging, I'm really letting go, but I'm just controlling a little bit. So play with that idea and see how it goes. So volley is about 80% pushing and 20% throwing or sometimes even less. So again from the feel perspective, not from technique perspective, but from feel perspective, we push the volley more, of course much more than we throw the racket on the forehand. Now but again, for most players that I see they're at around 99 to 100 push, so their volleys are something like this. And there's no you know, there's no element of, of a throw. So it's, even though you watch my volley, try and see the try and see if there's an element of a throw. 
There you go. So there's still an element of a throw. The racket is still going. A push would be very tight like this. So yes, we have to control the racket face more. Sometimes we're receiving a fastball. So we do push more, we control more, but not 100%. So again, experiment with these feels. So again, not technique, just experiment with the feel. Can you add a little bit of a throwing feel into your volley, 10, 20% and see what happens. So the same goes for your backhand volley. So can I go a little bit with the throw and then transition to a push? So again, experiment and see how that works for you. So in conclusion, as you're working on your strokes, especially when you're rallying with your friend from the baseline, think about throwing the racket more towards the ball and looking for the right ratio between pushing and throwing. Now there's one more very important element I want to add is that throwing and pushing mentally corresponds to letting go and control. So the more you actually push the ball, the more you're actually trying to control it. And the more you throw, the more you're letting go. And so you might find this as an obstacle at first, because you won't be able to throw the racket if you don't let go mentally. And by letting go, I mean let go of the outcome so that you're not concerned so much all the time for every single shot that you make whether it lands in or out or in the net. So don't worry so much about putting every ball in, but think about how do I train my body so that it works very efficiently. And so to do that, you will have to experiment and sometimes go out of your comfort zone with throwing to see what happens. And so when you throw, you let go mentally, you also let go physically, and you will see that the ball flies off your racket very effortlessly. So on the other side of spectrum is control, which results in pushing. And so by trying to find the ratio of throwing and pushing, you're also trying to find the ratio mentally between letting go and control. And once you find that, you will see that there is this ideal level of throwing, which is letting go an ideal level of pushing or ideal level of control. So what I want to point out is that most players or basically every player is too much on the side of control. I want you to try and push that toward letting go. How much can I let go of my strokes and still see that I have good control of them? So that's my challenge for you for the long term. And personally, I've been working on this for 10 years or maybe more. So it's constantly in my mind when I'm playing or rallying from the baseline, it's constantly in my mind how can I throw the racket more and still control? Because I want to be as comfortable as possible because sometimes I teach for long hours or sometimes I want to play for a long time. And when we are controlling, we're exerting a lot of force and we get tired very quickly and we can also injure ourselves very quickly. And so it's very comfortable for the body to do that and also very comfortable for the mind. As you're letting go mentally, you are enjoying yourself and that's why we're all on tennis courts, because we love tennis and we enjoy playing it. And so I want to give you another way of getting to that joy state on a tennis court. And it will happen when you really let go mentally and physically when you're playing tennis.